Welcome, everybody, to the first ever Redstone tutorial series. <clears throat> well, not first series, but first episode of the series. So, today, we are going to look at the very basics of Redstone. Uh, nothing too complicated, so you can get a feel for what you're about to get into, and decide if you want to continue or not. Hopefully you do, because... We need more redstoners, more people willing to just go in and build amazing things. So I'm using the Vatican Faithful pack for 1.5, and I've got Optifine installed, so I've customized all that. This is Minecraft 1.5, so we do have the new stuff installed, like all the redstone blocks and um, TNT carts and hoppers and stuff. So every now and then we're going to work on big projects, like we're going to build a calculator, we're going to build a TV screen, actually no we're not going to do that, nevermind, scratch that. Um, we're going to build an auto portal, like auto nether portal, that we can turn off and on at our own, like, choice. So, and all these are easy to build, well they're not easy to build, but, um, you can build them in your survival world. Don't know why you'd need a, um, don't know why you need a... Uh, calculator in your survival world. Sorry about that. But, who knows? You could. So, let's create a new world. We'll call this our redstone world. Feel free to follow along. Like, put this off to the side and listen to it while you play, like, you follow along in Minecraft. So, you get presets and look at what they've made for us. A redstone ready one. Basically just sandstone sand. Sandstone because redstone is red, appearing on this white, um, uh, creamy colored, um, surface makes it easy to see. Uh, we want cheats on, structures off, and let's create our new world. Okay guys, we're back. Um, so, yes, this is 1.5, like I said a second ago. So, I'm going to start off with the very basics with what is redstone i know this is a this is going to be a very boring video but it happens okay so let's get our basic redstone supplies <coughs> thank you um and i'm going to make this cool little machine but if you're wondering how i did the click thing where i just got it is that on your scroll wheel of your mouse if you just click that and aim at a block, you'll get it. So if I put down a comparator and break it and right click. So I'll get, here you go. There's the comparator. So um, let's go what, over everything is. So what is redstone? Redstone is this annoying little dust thing that you find in your mines. And there's too much of it. And eventually you're throwing it in lava going, I don't need this crap. I'm never going to use it. Well, for me, you're wrong. So... The first thing you're going to want to do is that, well, here's a redstone torch, okay? It's a little particle effect. It gives out a redstone signal, or outputs a redstone signal. That is a term I'll be using a lot. Input, output, um, signal strength. Um, those are terms I'll be using a lot. If you don't understand them, then no offense, but I don't think this is going to be for you, because obviously output, to put out a signal, input, to put into a signal. So the way redstone works is that torch will give off redstone signal every direction and power the block it's sitting on. So if I put, oh, sorry. Um, if I put redstone down there, it doesn't turn on, okay? Because it's powering this block, not this block down here. But if I took redstone wire and put it right here, wire right here, still doesn't turn on because it's not powering down here it's powering right here it can power blocks directly above it like this block if i put redstone dust on it it's because this block is being powered which is making the dust turn on the torch is making this air block turn on like be powered so the dust turns on so, if you saw a second ago when I messed up and the torch turned off, it was because that's called an inversion or a not gate. What happens is that power is going into this block and the torch is powering the block at the same time. So it's kind of like an elevator. 
this is powering this, which turns off this. So theoretically, if I put a block on top and put a torch on, it won't turn off because this one is not giving power. So yes is turning this on, no is not turning this on, which lets this one turn on. Which means if I put one on top, it turns off. So this is a way you can make redstone up here. You can just put some redstone on top. And if I were to break this redstone and put it right here and put a lever down, See how the wire is going into the block? Well, it's like a torch. This is now a torch because it's turning on this block, which is turning off the torch, which means if we go up here, the wire is now on. Okay? Pretty simple. It's like an elevator. And if we turn it off, since the block's not being powered, the torch is on. And it goes on. So if you ever see, like, little things in, like, one of Seth Bling's worlds or something... And it's like this, and there's a torch here, and a button, and it says, on if true. And you press the button, and it turns off. Well, that means it's, well, it's not on anymore. And that's basically what it's doing. It's inverting the signal. Because invert, I think it means to flip. So instead of it being on, it's flipping it and being it off. This was one of the blocks in the new 1.5 update, the redstone block. Looks pretty cool. I like it. And it acts like a redstone torch. It gives off a redstone signal. But what makes it even cooler is that if I give myself a sticky piston, face it, oh, sorry, this way. Okay, so see how it's on there? So I put this here. It'll push this. It'll push and bring it out so you can have like wire uh see, wire wire and you can make an inverter right there i think yeah. oh sorry we need one more redstone wire sorry there we go see because the block is going over here which is turning on the wire because it's powering the air block which is turning this off even if we turned Whoa, what is going on? My space bar is broken. Cool, well, fix now. If I, even if I turn this on, it won't matter because this is on. But if I pull this back, it turns back on because the wire's not on. Okay? So that's the block of redstone crafted with nine, obviously. So the next block is the repeater. Okay, this is a very, very amazing block. What happens is that if I put down wire and I make it go really far, I believe the limit is 15, and I turn this on down here, well, it didn't make it all the way. See, this this block right here, this um, this block, it's not powered. It is right here but not right here because, well, this didn't make it. So that's what the repeater is for. If I come down here and I, wait, actually, let me go back up here. Break these two and I make the wire longer. Put a block here, torch. If I, if I find the last one, which is right here, and I put a repeater down, it makes the signal strong again as if the lever is right here. It puts it back out, so now the torch is off. All it does is make the signal start over. Refresh. A new signal. One of the greatest things ever invented. The old repeater looked like this. It was tall and annoying. Just downright stupid, if you ask me. But it worked. It worked. If I bring out my redstone, see that's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I think. I don't know. Two forward. Okay. If I this is what you had to do. You had to do this. And it would turn off the torch, which would turn off the redstone, which would let this torch turn on and keep the wire going. But now, instead of doing this thing, 
you can just put a repeater down. Right there. That is the repeater. That's what I do. There you go. Ta-da. New repeater. Old repeater. Which one's better? That one's certainly less expensive. But it's the thought that counts. So next thing is the piston. Simple device. Power on. Turns on. Power off. Turns off. Can move a block. Hmm, see, we discovered something. Is this a bug? I don't know. Actually, I believe this is a bug because this is why. The redstone block is powering this um, air block, which is turning on, theoretically turning on the piston. It's like that one over there where we turned on the piston and it powered that but turning on the lever had no effect. I think the same thing is happening to us right now. See what happens if we put it like this. Nope. Okay, I think we've discovered a bug. What happens if we go like this? Well, this works too, but still. So, we've discovered a bug. If I so if I put a piston like this, I can't power it off. Okay, so that's an interesting bug we found. Good job. See, tutorials are for a good reason. Okay, the next thing is a comparator. Uh, it looks very complicated, but it's not at all. Okay, so what we want to do is set up a little signal. <clears throat> what the comparator does is that... Um, I found myself a door. Here's a door. Will that work? No, it won't. I don't think. I don't know. Let's just go with it anyways. What the comparator does is that it measures, is that if you put a lever right here and right here, it measures which one is stronger and uses that signal. So if we see, this is one, two, three, four, five, six blocks from the comparator. This one is one, two, three, four, five, which makes this one stronger. If you're wondering what I mean by like six and five, obviously six is the higher number. Let me go time set zero. Obviously six is the higher number, so we would think six. But remember what we had with the repeater, how it runs out of power? Well, that means the closer you are to the lever, the stronger it is. So if we turn on this one, wait, is it in the wrong spot? I think it may be in the wrong spot. Ah, there it goes. It's on the wrong spot. <laughs> I haven't worked with these, obviously, very much. Uh, what does this do again? I'm sorry. I have, I have not spent the time I would have liked to with the comparator, sadly enough. But I guess that's what happens. I would have loved to spend more time with this, but it's okay. Okay, what the comparator does when it turns on is that, okay, see how it's not like a repeater and it didn't make the signal new? It's actually the same strength it was. It basically went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, doesn't count this one, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. See, 16 doesn't turn on. So it just basically skips that and goes from 7 to 8, not 7, 8, 9, it's 7, Eight. Okay, I know there's something about inputs affect the amount of ah uh, that's what it is. Okay, well I just figured this out apparently. <clears throat> you can use the you can use this as an inverter and turn this one on and it'll output. But if you turn this one on, it won't turn it off. Question is, is that I want to figure out what it meant. By the strongest signal gets outputted. I'm sorry, guys. We'll come back and maybe next episode and work with the comparator some more because this is a new block. I need to learn more about it. Sorry. Uh, let me get my. Let's turn back. Okay, the next thing is part of the new update the daylight sensor. What this basically does is it, well, it senses daylight and puts out a redstone signal. So basically, it's the new clock is that 
I believe since 15, I believe every block is like every every block is like two and a half hours or something of the day. But what the good part about this, this is the only this is the only good part I found about this machine is that if I set time to slash time, let's go sunset. Is that one? Uh, set time to let's say a thousand. What was it? Oh, is it time set one thousand? Yeah. Okay, so ah oh, crap, I'm terrible at this thing. Let's do ten thousand. Mm. Time set ten thousand. Time set twelve thousand. We want it to be sunset. Okay, so if we find our daylight sensor, it's gonna go only. Wow, it's gonna go pretty far. Okay, so see, since the, it's darker, look, it, we lost a block. Okay, we're probably gonna lose another block soon. It's getting weaker. We're gonna lose this one. Oh, we lost that one. Okay, so if we go time set 14,000, we're going to lose all of our blocks. So what we do is we go time set 13,000. See, we got two blocks powered. So if we do time set 13,500, one block. So this is where this comes in handy. You put this down and you make an inverter. <clears throat> And put out the redstone signal. So see, it turned off. Which means the daylight sensor is saying it's nighttime, so there's no power, which means this is going to turn on. And what you can do is make yard lights. Oh, come on. Now it's going to turn on. But if I go slash time set zero, it's going to say it's daytime. So it's going to put out power, which is going to make this turn off so the light doesn't turn on. Very clever. Good job, Mojang. So what happens, basically, is that since it's day, it's putting out power. Which, as we discussed earlier with the elevator concept, it's powering the block, which turns off the torch. Or a not gate. It's not on. Clever. <laughs> and then it puts out the two redstone... And, like, the power doesn't be put out, which means the lamp doesn't turn on. So this is a reverse thing okay. where, at night, your lights will turn on, but during the day they won't. So you don't have to sit around with a lever and wait for it to be nighttime. Okay? Actually, let's keep that so we can remember when it's about to be night, because I'll probably forget. Just put our lamp... Daylight sensor. You want it to be one block, so the second it becomes nighttime, lights turn on. You can adjust how late you want it to be by the amount of redstone. As we remember, sunset right about there, actually it's right around here, right about there was three blocks, three-ish blocks. But see, since it's the min middle of the day, it's going to put it right here. I think it was 12,000. Was it 12,000 was the latest? Or was it 13,000? Ah, see? 13,000 and our lights turn on. So see, you can have it at any time you want. Oh, it's pretty. So you can just adjust the signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this clever little design I saw Seth Bling do once. Where if we delete one of our blocks and we go slash give give Epic Man 987. <clears throat> mm, sorry. <clears throat> Terribly sorry. Um, a 137 1. That'll give us a command block. So, what we can do is we can put this down. I go, day, we want our inverter. Well, we, we want our inverter, but not yet. Because we want to go like that. And we're going to put a wire in a second. We, we want it where when it gets dark at about. 1100, 11,000, it will do this command. Time set 
zero. Okay. So now, if I use a command to make the time go by, it'll mess it up and it won't work. So this is just a little nice little machine we've got here where when it becomes about here, the sun will go about here. Our machine, actually I think it's right about there where the blue, the light blue meets the dark blue. The um, daylight sensor won't be able to put out enough power where the block will not be powered, torch will turn on, and it will be set back to time set zero, which is sunrise. Okay, just a neat little design we've got there. Fun little thing to have. Okay, so I've gone over what is currently in my inventory. Now let's go over these two items. I like these items. Let's get ourselves a chest. Oh, and a trapped chest. I'll go over what this means in a second. We'll also need some redstone, of course, because think about the tutorial we're in. We're in the redstone tutorial. Okay. Oh, we're also going to need some arrows. We're going to need a bucket of water and a stack of arrows. Yeah, two buckets of water, sorry. Okay, so one of the new features is that dispensers can go up. So if you take a lever and put arrows in it, you can go shoot it up and it'll come back down see look it's raining arrows everybody run okay so that's what a dispenser does it if you use it'll pop out blocks and stuff but if you put an arrow in it it's going to shoot it as if it's an entity and sh launch the arrow and if you put water in it's going to dispense the water, which is not good. Okay? But if you just want a calm drink and not a flood, you can use the new block, the dropper, which does the exact opposite and drops everything as an entity, I mean, as a item. So arrows and water buckets, it's going to drop it as the, buck the bucket, and when it drops an arrow, it's going to drop the arrow, not the other item. Okay, I just thought those were pretty clever. So what you can do is that if you want a arrow factory in vanilla Minecraft, which I think is very awesome, yet very hard to build, it can, this is how you can do it. You can have these to give you your arrows instead of being Gatling gunned. The cool part I'm looking forward to is if we find a jungle temple sometime in the future, and there's a bug, and some of the dispensers turn into these. What are they called again? Droppers. That'll be a fun bug. Another feature of them is that they can get items out of a chest. So And so can um, dispensers, I believe. Let's put our two levers down. So if we put our arrows in here, we can just go. Oh, wait, no, sorry. It does it the other way around. It puts the dropper arrows into the chest. Wrong way, Logan. What is wrong with you today? Remember nothing. If I just go like this, it puts it in the chest. Do it a bunch. Okay, so those are those. Yeah, those are those. The dispenser actually won't work because I just thought about how the entity thing works. And it'll actually dispense it outward and just shoot it. I'm not sure if it comes to a block. I just put like a trap chest in there. Nah, it's not going to work. Okay, speaking of the trap chest, this is actually cool and very redstone-y, is that the trap chest outputs a redstone signal when someone opens it. Out, sadly, out of one. See, it puts one. But I believe if I put blocks in it, no, it's always going to put out one, isn't it? Oh, well. But you can always just hook up a repeater to it. So then it's basically putting out a full signal. Why is it lagging? There you go. Full signal. The way you can tell is it's a little darker right there, and when you open and close, it's red. I'm sorry about this lag. I don't understand why it's happening, since there's nothing here to cause this lag. That's these new items. Ah. So we all know things aren't perfect when it comes to Minecraft. So I think it's something about the new items. I don't know. I'm, wow, this I've is terrible lag. Yeah, 
Why don't I think it may be? I think it may be our command block setup. Yeah. Nope. It's about what well, it wants to rain, but it's not going to because I'm going to go weather clear. Hmm. This is most peculiar. I don't understand. Well, let's just delete our blocks right here and go over some more redstone item things. So this is the hopper, and what it can do is... <laughs> it's just not very redstone-y. It says it's in the redstone thing, but it's not that redstone-y. It's a funny word. I think the redstone part about it is that if you put a chest and shift-right-click a hopper on top, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. I'll be back when I find the reason for this lag. Okay, guys, I found out the reason for the lag, and it's that I'm running out of computer memory again, sadly. So I'm going to finish up with the hopper and call it a wrap, okay? So the way it works is that you toss items in the top, like that. Oh, sorry. I just put it in, and it puts it in the chest. But what happens is that... Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. If there is a redstone signal, it won't put stuff in the chest. See, it puts stuff in the chest now. But if I put a redstone signal on. Wow, this is a terrible lag. Put redstone signal, and I put this stuff in here, it's not going to do it. But if I go power on, it dispensed it. Okay, so this has been the first episode of the Redstone Tutorials. I'll see you guys later. Bye.